Hey everyone, Alyssa Hope here, and just when you thought the whole Evander Kane drama was over, think again, because we have yet another, I guess, episode to add to this saga, and this time it involves Ryan Hartman and Kane's ex-wife, and also Evander Kane. What really kickstarted this whole thing, Minnesota was winning against Edmonton 5-1, so things are bound to get pretty chippy at that point. But what really caused all the controversy and all the stir was what Ryan Hartman did after a scrum. So the scrum really began between Matt Zuccarello and Kyler Yamamoto. You could kind of see him going back and forth a little bit. And then Evander Kane sees everything going on and decides to jump in. And then it just all came to a head from there. Everyone kind of got involved. And Evander Kane ended up giving Kirill Kaprizov, Minnesota star, a cross check which really, really set Ryan Hartman off, which Hartman is not shy from getting involved in scrums and standing up for his teammates. We've seen that before. He decided to, after he got restrained and after the referees kind of jumped in, officials and, you know, taking, pulling guys apart from each other, Hartman decided to really show Kane, I guess in a visual way, uh, how much he dislikes him and he gave him the middle finger. Now, this, I think because it was a Vander Kane that people were actually more approving of this, I think, than they would have been if it happened to another player, depending on who they were. But Hartman, besides the middle finger, also said like F you, but he, he gave him a verbal F you and he gave him a visual F you. So this all just started a, a huge stir on Twitter and uh, a lot of people were talking about it. So. Anna Kane afterwards got involved in the whole thing because Ryan Hartman was issued a fine over $4,000, which, I mean, when you're making NHL money, it's not really much. I mean, it's really not. It's like pocket change. I mean, it's not like Hartman really needed the money, but after Hartman was issued the fine, Anna Kane came to his aid and said that she wanted to help contribute and help pay for his fine. So her getting involved made things even more interesting and kind of kept this whole soap opera surrounding Evander Kane going. Also, after the game, Ryan Hartman had some things to say to Evander Kane and uh, Kane also spoke on the incident. So Ryan Hartman says, it goes to show we had five guys in there. They didn't have one guy in there to help him. I don't think any of their guys are going to defend him. So in summary, what that means is Ryan Hartman thinks that Evander Kane isn't really liked by his teammates and he thinks that his teammates just, I guess, don't really care or won't come to the aid of Kane for whatever reason. Now Evander's response was also kind of taking shots at Hartman, so they, they took verbal jabs um, through the media at each other, but his whole thing was hinged on the fact that you know, he, he's calling their team soft or whatever. So he says, it took all five guys and they couldn't bring me down. It's something I definitely would have liked to have gotten loose. <laughs> Put it that way. These little guys, they want to act tough, but they wait for the linesman to come in. There's your quote, guys. So Vander Kane always talking the talk. I remember whenever him and Ryan Reeves got involved and he started to call him the Muffin Man and and that whole thing transpired and uh, Reeves changed his profile picture on Twitter. And that was a, a interesting situation in and of itself. But this whole thing, I mean, it, it really blew up because the controversy that has surrounded Kane throughout his career. And I believe that, like I said, if it would have happened to another player, that people wouldn't have been, I guess, as approving of it. But... Even still, some people were questioning the fine, uh, why Hartman did get a fine, because, you know, when you're on the ice, you're constantly hearing chirps, you're, also, I mean, constantly giving chirps, and these, uh, like, verbal jabs, I mean, obviously, they're profanity-laced, so it's not like these guys are um, giving uh, grade school chirps, what kids might say that that's rated G or PG, or what have you. But I think, in my opinion, the reason why they are finding them is because oftentimes you can kind of keep control on the chirps. I mean, you're going to get the hot mics and things like that, but even when players are mic'd up, they have the bleeps, which bleep out a lot of the language. And usually if a hot mic, if it does happen on air, 
someone is quick to kind of shut it down and kind of mute it. You know, you'll get the occasional player in an interview where they'll say a word or something. Fuck your head, but that can be more controlled. And I think that in my opinion, that's why we don't really see fines for things uh, that are explicit in the verbal nature. But with this, uh, more of a, a visual uh, obscene gesture, I guess you would say, um, you can't, you can't really expect it. And once it happens, I mean, it's there and it can make, I guess, the network look bad. Um, I don't know a lot about, you know, PR, but I'm guessing. And, and so I'm sure that they want to avoid that happening as much as they can. So the NHL issues fines for it. Now, like I said, it's not really gonna matter to the a player that's making millions of dollars, but if I were you know, a player and that happened to me, I would at least care about what people thought of me. I would care about my peers, I, you know, what they thought. I would care about how the fans saw me. Now, this, this situation, uh, Hartman is seen as the good guy here. So, um, but, but I would say if it was reversed, for instance, like Evander Kane was the one, um, you know, giving the finger to Hartman, then people would not be questioning the fine at all. I mean, I don't think so. Most people would just be totally down with it and they would not be questioning it at all. So it just goes to show who's on that receiving end, how things are interpreted and things are taken. But I just thought I'd give my two cents on the matter since, like I said, it's been a huge topic on Twitter. A lot of people have been talking about it, covering it in hockey media in general. So um, I hope you enjoyed kind of hearing my opinions and my thoughts on it. And I mean, we'll just have to see if this rivalry continues. I, I don't know if Minnesota is going to go up against Edmonton in the playoffs. I don't know. I, it's looking more like Edmonton will be facing a different opponent. But I'd say if they did burst in the playoffs, man, that would be so exciting. That would be a tumultuous series um, for, for this reason and others. I think that they've had a rivalry when they versed each other. I've noticed at least this season personally. I remember Leon Dreisaitl. He brutally speared Kirill Kaprizov in uh, a meeting. I believe it was around December, January it happened, and it was pretty bad. Like, you could see Kaprizov just kind of down, like hunched over on the bench. And once Leon gave him the spear, then he hit him, and uh, and it just caused a big stir amongst the NHL fan bases. So I think there's a rivalry there, and I think that it could get very heated. I think it'd be exciting, but then again probably won't happen, at least in the first round. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully I will be able to upload at least once a day, sometimes multiple videos, but I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see y'all next time.